In this video, we continue on a series of videos looking at two and three gang switches. And again, we're gonna be working with a two gang switch. Remember, two gang, two switches on the front. And when we turn them over on this style of switches, they're always two way. So this being a three gang switch, and when we turn it over, these are all two way switches. And we see in videos number one and two, we started the process of working with a two gang switch. And the easiest place to think about it is maybe when you come in the front door, there's a switch there that turns on the ground floor light, and there's a switch there that turns on the first floor light. So that's where we usually see it. And when we walk upstairs, there is another switch that can also turn off the first floor light. And that's what we've got here. And that's probably a one gang, two way switch you've got there. So that's the arrangement we're gonna be looking at today. And we've looked at it in the first two videos as well, some of those systems that are gonna be used today. So let's look at the drawing that we did in video number two. We had one light here controlled by one of the switches. So in other words, this light here was controlled by this switch. And when I turned it on and off, that was say the ground floor. And then we had another light in another area. Maybe it's the first floor that we can turn it on and off as well as from a different position. Now the cabling system that I've got here is not quite how possibly you're gonna do it if this was ground floor, first floor. This is more likely, like I suggested before, this was maybe a kitchen light. This was a dining room light, both on the ground floor, and this was two wide. So we're gonna take it and then look at it as if it was that scenario here, where we've got a two gang switch at the front door and another two way switch at the top of the landing operating this switch here. So effectively what we get is this switch when I come in the door, ground floor light. This one here will turn on the first floor light. When I get upstairs, I can turn it on or off from that position as well. So we've got it two wide. And we're gonna think about how that would be wired. It's been sent to my attention that this drawing here is very handy if you're doing the 8202 City and Guilds assessment, because in that assessment I've been told there are two lights, there is a two gang switch, and one of them is two wide, and you have to do the wiring diagram. So that was video two in this series, and if you haven't checked that one out and you're doing the 8202, it might be worth having a look at that. But we're gonna look at this now from the point of view, ground floor, first floor, and I'm sure you'd like them the other way around because that's at the top, that might be the first one. It's just easily laid out for me. And thinking of that layout, if you need to get any of these drawings, there is a link in the description where you can download this booklet and this booklet we're working through as we go through this series of videos. So ground floor, first floor. First of all, let's think about the fusing of these circuits. If you go to your consumer unit, you might call it a fused box. If you go to there, you're likely to have uh, a couple of lighting circuits, and maybe they're labeled ground floor, first floor, or it might be upstairs and downstairs. So if you turned off your ground floor breaker, so that's six amps, the downstairs lights go off, and the one on the top of the landing would stay on, because that would be wired off the upstairs or first floor lighting circuit. So you're likely to have at least two fuses for your lighting circuits at home, and one will be upstairs and one will be downstairs. And that's what we're gonna explore in this video, how this would actually be wired. Also, if this is the first floor light fitting, you're likely to bring your twin and CPC cable down to the switch here, which is in the same area, and one three core from the upstairs switch to the downstairs position. If you look at this drawing here, we didn't do that, did we? We brought, uh, if this was the upstairs light, we brought the twin and CPC down, and this was the upstairs switch. We also brought the three core down. So it's unlikely in that scenario that we've got here, ground floor, first floor, that it would be wired exactly the same as the video number two, that has just said 8202. That video looks as if it's gonna be perfect for the wiring diagram. So I'm gonna bring my cable in from the consumer unit to the ground floor, and I'm gonna bring a cable in from this side here as if it's come from another fuse on the lighting circuit upstairs, meaning that these will be on two different breakers. I'm then gonna bring a cable down from the first floor light to the switch in its local area, and then we'll bring a three core across to make it two-way, and that would be the cable that went from the upstairs two-way switch. So this two-way switch here, we'd have a three core down to here, um, which would have to come obviously through the floors and walls, et cetera, to get down to there. But let's, let's unpeel it as we go and see if we can work out what we're up to. So let's start with the consumer unit feed in the ground floor light because it's in circuit. So let's bring that down. We're only gonna bring one into the consumer unit. So our CPC comes into here as we've seen many times. We'll take our neutral next. Remember the connections in this consumer unit are not identical to what you'd need in the real world. 
I'm going to bring our neutral into there. I'll connect it in a minute. And we'll bring our loin in as well from the top of probably a six amp circuit breaker. So then we've got to work out where they go. We're used to seeing this arrangement hopefully by now. We've got a block of three, which are neutral, a block of three, which is loop, and a block of two, which is our switching line conductor. So neutral, loop, switching line. And we're bringing in a permanent line, neutral, and our CPC. So our permanent line connection can go in any of the three terminals here. It's a solid brass block, and we're gonna bring it into there. So if I bring it into the middle one like so and then we bring our neutral in and we've got our CPC now we always like to just give it a little strike with with yellow just to make it look a little bit more a CPC so we've brought in our PVC PVC twin and CPC cables sometimes called twin and earth cables and the green and yellow is because we have to over sleeve it and that's brought in the line the neutral and the cpc which we've seen in loads of other videos so that's from the consumer unit the supply in here well imagine the consumer unit now took a cable up to the upstairs went round and eventually ended up at the first floor or upstairs lighting i'm going to bring the cable in from this side as if it's gone round the upstairs and got its way into here so let's bring this one in so it's on a different fuse let's bring our cpc in again just strike it over the a little bit of yellow. Let's bring our neutral connection in. And we will bring our permanent line connection in as well. So again, a twin and CPC cable on the upstairs lighting circuit. It would have come from the consumer it got its way upstairs from a different breaker than the ground floor and brought in our neutral, a permanent line connection and our circuit protective conductor, our CPC, and our twin and CPC, or twin and earth cables. So now these are on different uh, fuses, which we said earlier, and this light here on the first floor, or upstairs lighting, whichever you wanna say, would be quite close to the switch in that area. So that's where we're gonna bring down our cable, which will bring down our permanent line, our CPC, and remember we've used it a lot in other videos that sometimes the blue one, when it comes down to a switch, can actually be a switching line conductor and we know we need to identify that with brown sleeving so that would be down from here and our standard arrangement here for this one here which we've done a couple of times now on this uh, two gang uh, video series again we'll bring down our permanent line to common our switching line either l1 or l2 and our cpc down so let's start by let's do the first floor first so i'm going to bring my cpc down into the switch And that goes into there. I'm gonna bring my permanent line and goes into common. Remember when we have a two-way switch, we've got common, L1 and L2, and we're gonna bring our permanent line into common and then either L1 or L2. But this is gonna be two-wayed. So if we did that, we'd have to then move the connections round. So let's think carefully when we're doing it for two-way. We're gonna to need to do something in common which normally, if you remember my videos, is a black conductor of a three core. So I'll bring my three core in. I've got my black conductor, which links my commons together. And we had the permanent line and switching line. It didn't matter which way around, going in L1 and L2. So if this is gonna be a two-way switch, okay, so we're gonna switch it from here and here, I must make sure I make those connections correctly. So let's bring our permanent line down. And that's gonna go into either. L1 or L2, and I'm gonna bring down my switching line. So I'm gonna bring that one down as well, and into there. And we know that that blue conductor is not a neutral, the neutral's with this side. We know that that is a switching line conductor, and we need to be identified with brown sleeving. So we identify both ends with brown sleeving which is here, so we identify that. So that was that cable coming down because it's going to be too wide. Okay, so let's pull that in then. Let's do that while we're here. Let's bring the three core in. We've said in all my presentations that I've been using black as common. Okay, so I've got my black as my common and I've got gray and brown for my other conductors. And again, you notice the black and gray are identified with brown sleeving. So this is the three core that would be from the upstairs or first floor switch that controls the light 
up there that goes down to where the, maybe the front door is. We know also the switch will be controlled down there. You're gonna take a three core from the upstairs lighting switch and bring it into the downstairs, in this case, two gang switch in order that we have that control. Hopefully that's something you're familiar with, even if you haven't got it in your own house that you've seen in other people's homes, that arrangement. So let's bring that three core in next. So we take the black, I'm gonna to link together my commons in my three core. So that's my common in. Remember, we're gonna to have to put that brown sleeving on it. So just put a little bit of wiggle on there. Next, let's go with the um, gray. So it doesn't matter which one we do. Now, I like the gray one um, to not be with the brown because the other conductor is brown. So I like to keep my browns together. So let's bring our gray one out of here. Again, it doesn't matter which one it goes into. So I'll just pop it into there. And then we bring our brown of our three core, which is with our brown of our twin and CPC or twin and earth cables. We bring that into there. Remember the gray will need brown sleeving on it as well. So that's the cable that's gone, the three core cable from upstairs down to the switch downstairs in order that you've got two way control. Now we've got our standard uh, ground floor or land um, bottom of the stairs, light, etc. So that's at the bottom on the fir first floor, ground floor. So down there we've got this lighting point by the front door maybe. So we're just gonna bring our normal twin and CPC cable down. So we've got a twin and CPC cable and we're gonna have our permanent line, our switching line and our CPC. So let's bring that down. So our permanent line connection. We'll bring that down and pop it into the common just there. We're gonna bring down our blue, which isn't a neutral. We'll have our switching line connection here. And we're gonna bring it down and either L1 or L2, doesn't matter. And then our CPC is gonna come here and across and down to here. We might as well put the CPC in on our three core at the same time, which we've missed out. So we've got that three core CPC in as well. So we've got the CPC from our three core coming across and the CPC from our twin and CPC cable coming down. And that's the sort of scenario we're gonna have when we've got ground and first floor lighting points. Must make sure we put our brown sleeve in on our blue here because it's not a neutral at both ends. And we know from our previous uh, presentations that we would actually have, this would be connecting to our lamp. We'll go brown that side, blue that side. If I just show you that again. So what we've got there is obviously switching line, neutral, neutral, switching line, and the center one's our permanent loop. So our line comes in and out. So let's think what we've got now then. So we've got a, a cable from the consumer unit in the lighting circuit downstairs on the ground floor, eventually ending up on that ground floor light. We've got a different cable that goes upstairs for a lighting circuit on a different breaker that goes all the way around and ends up on our first floor lighting point. So that's there. These are on two different breakers. And our cable system is wired like so. That does mean, however, in this switch here, if I needed to replace it, I would need to turn off both the ground and first floor lighting circuit in order to isolate. Because if I turned off just the ground floor breaker in the consumer unit, only half the conductors in here would be isolated. I would need to turn off both lighting circuits in order that I could isolate it and change this switch. If I was working on the switch on the uh, first floor and I was replacing that two-way switch, one gang two-way switch, I would only need to isolate the upstairs lighting circuit. See, we've got a proof dead, etc., in order that I could replace it. So that's a piece of advice there, isn't it? A word of warning that when you're working in multi-gang switches, be very careful to make sure you confirm that all conductors have been isolated because it can be that you could have more than one circuit in there. So the upstairs and downstairs lighting circuit could appear in both these style of switches. There we have it then. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a permanent line comes into loop. It comes down to common. When we operate that switch, we turn on the lighting point here because it's got a switching line here and a neutral here, it would operate and control the light. If I wanted to carry the circuit on, if I want to go from this one to another, maybe the kitchen, dining room, etc., twin and CPC cable comes out, you bring out your neutral, you bring out your CPC, and you bring out your line conductor that carries the system onto another area. And that's 
what we end up having in circuit, don't we? We're used to unscrewing ceiling rows and pendants and seeing that all the connections have been made. If you look here, they are all made. So we've got a switching line, three loops, two neutrals and the neutral to the lamp. That would be full of those connections. And that's what you're used to when you're unscrewing those in a domestic dwelling. And again, in here, it would go off and continue on the system. The thing to bear in mind here, as I said before, was the number of fuses that need to be isolated before replacing the switch. There is a way around it, and there's different methods, and I'm sure people will have their own way of doing it. But in the next video in this series, we'll go on and see if we can't um, have this switch downstairs actually on the ground floor fuse, as well as feeding upstairs to the upstairs lighting point, but make it as simple to do that as possible. Because at the minute, we have a cable that comes from the upstairs switch to the downstairs switch. So that's one cable makes that journey. So let's see if we can stick with that rule in the next video, where we have still one cable coming from the downstairs two gang switch to the upstairs switch, but will mean that we can make both of these on the ground floor fuse. So that's where we're gonna to step to next time out. I understand these videos are getting a little bit more complicated as we go. And again, I recommend you watch all the videos in the series. Make sure you pause and consider what we're talking about at each stage. And again, you have an option of drawing these out yourselves if you download them from the link in the description.